In an immunoblot test, purified antigens are individually bound to nitrocellulose strips. Autoantibodies from the test sample can bind to these antigens. They are then made visible with a marked detection antibody. Immunoblots are easy to carry out and can be used to detect several antibodies simultaneously. They are well suited for differentiating analyses after a positive screening test and provide a semi-quantitative result. Every laboratory with standard basic equipment can easily and quickly carry out immunoblots without complex preparation. Knowledge of special techniques and technically demanding instruments are not required. Absolutely essential is a rocking platform capable of regular rocking motions to ensure optimal wetting of the blot strips during incubation. Various manufacturers offer kits that contain all the reagents and materials required to carry out the immunoblot test. A plastic tray with several compartments in which the blot strips can be individually incubated. Prepared test strips and a calibration strip. Sample buffer. A solution containing an enzyme conjugated secondary antibody called the conjugate and the substrate solution for the enzyme. The wash buffer is provided as a concentrate. The contents of each bottle of the wash buffer concentrate must be diluted to a final volume of one litre by the addition of distilled water. Once prepared, this ready-to-use wash solution can be stored for at least 30 days at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. To carry out a test, one strip is carefully transferred with tweezers to each compartment of the incubation tray. In order to obtain optimal results, the test strips must be placed in the tray so that the side to which the antigen is fixed faces up. On the documentation sheet included with the kit, the numbers of the blot strips to be used should be noted in the order in which they are placed into the incubation tray. The laboratory numbers of the patient samples are added to the sheet for the corresponding test strip. One milliliter of sample buffer is now pipetted into each tray. Be careful that the pipette tip does not touch the strip. Subsequently, the strips in the tray are incubated for five minutes on the rocking platform. This step ensures even wetting of the blot strip with sample buffer. Once the blot strips are evenly moistened with sample buffer, 10 microliters of the patient sample are pipetted directly into the appropriate compartment of the tray. To avoid cross-contamination, each sample must be pipetted with a fresh pipette tip. The strips with the samples are then incubated for 60 minutes at room temperature on the rocking platform. This incubation period allows any autoantibodies present in the serum sample to bind to the corresponding antigens on the immunoblot strip. During this incubation period, it is important to ensure that there are no air bubbles over the test strip because this can hinder the binding of autoantibodies. This leads to non-uniform colour bands and thus to incorrect results. It is thus important that the rocking platform performs slow rocking motions so that the immunoblot strips are wetted evenly all over. It is also important that the strips do not stick to the incubation tray. This can also lead to irregular colour which can make it difficult or impossible to read the test results on the strip. After incubation, the serum solutions must be completely removed by decanting or suction. Next, two millilitres of wash buffer are pipetted onto each immunoblot strip. The tray is then rocked for an additional five minutes for washing. The wash buffer must then be removed. This washing process must be repeated two more times in order to remove all non-specifically bound serum components. Once the wash buffer from the last washing procedure has been completely removed, 
one milliliter of conjugate solution is placed in each compartment of the incubation tray. Incubation then proceeds for 30 minutes at room temperature, again with even rocking. This allows the marked secondary antibodies from the conjugate to bind to the complex formed by the antigen fixed to the blot and the antibody bound to it. After this incubation period, the conjugate must be completely removed and the strips must again be washed three times. After the final washing procedure and complete removal of the wash buffer, one milliliter of the substrate solution is added to each strip. During the subsequent 10 minute incubation period, the enzyme coupled to the secondary antibodies transforms the colourless or faintly yellow substrate into an intensely purple end product. A purple line on the strip indicates the presence of an autoantibody in the serum sample that reacts with the antigen fixed to the test strip at that location. The strips are washed three times for five minutes with one milliliter of distilled water in order to remove excess substrate and to stop the reaction. Before evaluation, the immunoblot strips must be laid out on an absorptive paper to dry. The dried test strips are attached to the documentation sheet and can be analysed by comparing the colour intensity of a band on the test strip with those on the calibration strip. The test is valid if the serum control conjugate control and cutoff control all show a colour change. The serum of patients with an autoimmune disease may contain multiple different autoantibodies simultaneously. Test strips of such patients will show several bands.